turning narrow boards into wide boards because you can't really buy these much anymore. Welcome back to my channel and the, and, and the shop here. Time to turn small boards into big boards, or I should say narrow boards into wide boards. If any of you have priced up an 18 inch or a 20 inch wide piece of cherry these days, slab, big, you know, yeah, go visit Matt Cremona. He's got really wide boards, but I, you can't get that around here. And anyway, anyway, to get two of those for the sides, be about a grand almost. So let's start with these two pieces here. These smaller pieces here are going to be uh, joined together, and these are going to become the top. So the top's going to be cherry because you're going to be able to look over and see the top. So I want that to be cherry to match the rest of it. These four pieces here are going to be the sides. There's two here and two there. Again, they'll be jointed and glued together. Now, I cut my pieces oversize, so after I've glued them together, I can run all of them to the table saw and get the exact same width on all of them. They're 20 inches wide when I'm done, so no problem on the table saw. These are actually for the, uh, the base. I'm going to build the base out of these. Now, here, I've got the starters. This is the pine for the bottom, and it'll be dovetailed into the bottom. Typical, all, this, all the secondary woods are pine or poplar or something like that. Sometimes they're even oak. Sometimes they're maple. But I'm going to use this pine to do the bottom. And the, uh, the dust frames and in, internal framework and the rails and all that will be pine as well. But I'm going to put some cherry on them for reasons I'll explain later. So what have I got this clamped together for? I, just, I demonstrated this in a previous video. What I'm going to do is, with it clamped together, I'm going to run it through the jointer. That will joint these two sides, these two sides perfectly together. What that means is, when you take that and then you butterfly them open, they'll match beautifully, we hope. But they should match, should match up fine. So uh, what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to run these through the jointer. I'm going to joint a couple of these panels together and then when they're all done we'll then we'll cut them out to the right width then we'll cut them to the right length it's clamped up actually i think i want to do this side oh, there i go hit the microphone again so yeah that's what i want to do i want to do that side because there's a knot on this side not that that matters much, but let's go ahead and uh, take, do that now. Um, since I'm waiting for my new A&R headsets to come, headset to come because of Bose, it's going to be here Wednesday, I think. I went out and bought some of these uh, from Home Depot. They're 3Ms, and I tell you, I've used these already, and for a non-A&R headset, these things are pretty damn good. So let's go ahead and do some, do some, do some jointing. Doing the jointer shuffle. Now we'll bring it over here and we'll butterfly it and see how it looks. I have, uh, I'll demonstrate them in a little bit, the back to back clamps that go on my bench for actual doing things like this. A little bit of a, that looks good. It's going to be a, almost a little bit of a spring joint because I've got a little gap here, but it's not, it's tiny. I can't get a fingernail in there, but the clamping process will take care of that. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the back-to-backs now so we can glue this sec these up. First thing i got to do, though, of course, is do the, uh, put in the biscuit slots. Okay, I've cut the biscuit slots. I also did a diamond pattern on the uh, workpiece. Pardon for the banging. On the workpiece, so I know which side goes where. So let me get the back-to-back uh, -back clamps, and we'll go ahead and glue this one up. 
I have featured these clamps on my channel before. Um, these are made by the manufacturer. I got these from many years ago. They're made by somebody else now. Same principle, same kind of clamp. What it is when I made back to back, which means, look, you can clamp it on your bench and clamp your workpiece. Clamp it on your bench, clamp your workpiece. So you've got a good stable clamping system set up to hold your workpiece square because these pieces here, these will be on the, these will be loose. So that, so that, that's fixed there and there. And then you bring the end pieces over here. You slide them in to meet your workpiece and then start your clamping. A little bit of tapping here and there. Even though I've got biscuit joints in here, there may be some things going on. Anyhow, I'm gonna use the Type On 3 because it's got a little more open time. And uh, let's go ahead and glue this piece up. Let me get my glue. I've um, cut these for a number, uh, number 10 biscuits, which I have over here. I think. And my number 10 biscuits. But double check to make sure you got the right biscuits. Desiccant pack to keep them dry from getting swelling. Yeah, those are the number 10s. Okay, we're good. But the, the really good idea is to put them in a glass jar. If you still use biscuits, put them in a glass jar and put a desiccant pack in there. So I'm going to pull those out later. Right now, I want to do some gluing. So my, yep, this way. So my diamond goes up this piece, and the tri triangle goes up this piece, and then down this piece. So once I get these uh, glued, or get the glue on them, then I can just flip that piece down and this piece down and go ahead and bring them together. Anybody notice that these tight bond bottles are getting harder to open? Get pull the nip, just pull the thing out. I don't know, what's going on there? And I'm doing swirls so I can get it all over everything. Put a little bead and do a swirl. And your glue gets everywhere you need it. Give it another one brush. Along the length. Of course, as this is the 18th century, I'd be using hide glue. And that's a whole different. Well, I've got some hide glue. It's uh, I've got um, hide glue beads that I make hot for other projects that are not on the channel. And then I've got uh, the old brown glue, which is a room temperature hide glue, basically. Works pretty good in a lot of things. So now this one, this one's gonna go this way, and this one's gonna go this way. There, that's lined up. Now I wanna bring them together on the marks. Yeah, a little bit. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, since this is a hidden piece, it doesn't have to have a perfect glue joint, but it has to have a close glue joint for the dovetails. Now we can drag them together. Okay, that's a start. And then I'm gonna get two of these. This is an on-the-fly decision. Get two of these to drag them in even further, get them tighter and then drag these things in so that they're really snug. Yes, yes. Wow, I'm really, I'm really surprised at how well that came out. Surprise myself more every day. And now what I do is take these and like that. Ah. It's 
it's not too tight so it's, it starves the glue joint. Oops. Okay. There's the bottom. Next. All the glue loops are done. We're going to be cutting them out in a minute, uh, but I have a little tip or suggestion for you if you're using flat clamps like this. Um, what I do is wherever the glue joint is, I put down packing tape, the plastic, clear plastic packing tape. And the reason is that the glue really won't stick to it and it keeps it off the glue, off the clamp. What I recommend, not a sponsor, just throwing it out there, the Staples brand tape really comes off the, comes off the wheel a lot easier than just about everybody else's and it sticks just as well. So there's that. Anyhow, let me get this cleared up and we'll do some, uh, do some table saw work. Apparently I haven't fully figured out my new DJI microphone setup. Uh, it's had a few glitches. I might be wind up sending it back. Anyway, here is the boards cut to width, excuse me, glued together and we're getting ready to cut them to width. Now I glued them, scraped them and prepped them. The next step is to joint one edge, then cut almost to the width that I want, a little bit proud, and then after I make that cut, flip the boards over and set the table saw to the exact width that I want and then cut them to the width and they'll be ready to go for the next step. Time to cut them to length. Now, if this, the audio in this segment sounds different, the DJI mic set I have failed again, three times. So I went back to my old Lark uh, 150 from Hollyland. No endorsements here, just just telling the truth. And so uh, I'm using this now. I'll have to, if, hopefully, I can fix it in post. Anyhow, so I've got. The, the, two, the top and the bottom sitting here on the sawhorses, I put the parallel clamps from side to side so that the pieces will remain co correctly oriented with each other. And what I do is take a, take a square and I pick where I want to make the cut. I've already done that. And I mark a line. And that's where I'm going to put my uh, my uh, track saw to, to cut that end off. So let's let's go ahead and cut that end off. In this instance, I have used both of the clamps to hold the track in place. So I guarantee to not get any slippage either way or the other way, and it'll be a nice straight cut. Now, these saws can leave a little bit of a funny, not quite super smooth cut on the end. I'll have to address that later. And of course I'm using my dust collection because I can. Of course moving slowly really helps give you a nice fine finish on the end. Now this is why I have the clamps coming up from underneath the workpiece because now I need to do a measurement so I can cut the other side. Now, the width of the cabinet is 40 inches. And um, the overlay, the, the, the face of the, si of, of, of the side is going to add a quarter of an inch, eighth on either end, to this piece. So I want to cut this one quarter of an inch shy of 40 inches, making room for the dovetails. So I'm going to cut it there. All right. And we're going to do the 
Oops, I gotta, gotta move the clamp. So now I take and I want to Notice I'm taking the line off the same side. Get to my mark that I made at 39 and 3 quarters. Make a mark. Now I have to move this out in a way because of uh, the um, the track is not the track saw is not ambidextrous. It can only do um, it can only do uh, one side of the track as opposed to two sides of the track. Let me move this closer. There we go. Because so I'm going to cut it from this direction. I don't think the hose is going to reach, reach this far. There we go. And we get this one right there. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to make a cut from this direction. Uh, this hose is supposed to reach this far. This is one of those Rockler hoses supposed to go all over your shop. Kinda, maybe. Maybe not. I'll live with the dust this time. Ears. Nice. Okay. So the top and the bottom now are ready for the dovetails, as it were. I can put these aside, but you can see bottom and the top are ready for the dovetail. So I'll now off camera cut the rest of these out to the right length for the finished cabinet. And uh, when we come back in the next episode, I'll be doing the dovetails for real on, on this piece, which will be interesting. Uh, I've, uh, I've sweetened up how, my technique for the half blinds and we're ready to go. So until next time, when we hopefully cut some really nice dovetails, make great things out of wood. See ya.